Today, in the longest episode of the world's shortest threat modeling videos, we're going to talk about data flow diagrams. Data flow diagrams are heavily associated with threat modeling because threats tend to follow data and because they're simple to draw and easy to use to help us understand what are we working on. They have five symbols in them. They are external entities, anything outside your control. We represent those with sharp pointy corners to remind ourselves that they're out of our control. Second, processes. Any running code that is yours, that is under your control, is the sec are the second element. We use data flows, the third element to connect them. And we use little drums to represent where data is stored, our data stores. Last element, the trust boundary, where we show that different elements are operated by different entities, they're operated by different people, different processes, that we trust them differently and we enforce those controls in some way. And so external entities, data flows, data stores, trust boundaries, external entities, data flows, data stores, external entities, processes. There we go. That's number five. Those five elements make up a data flow diagram, something that looks like this. And if you search around, you may find different data flow diagrams that use slightly different symbols. The ones that I use today, I call DFD3 to distinguish them from all of those others. It's not that important as long as everyone understands what are we working on.